we are working on our 2009 Honda Yazira. This car has a problem. It's not idling well. It's uh, the speed is high. It's hesitating, and the complaint is there is no proper idling. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. So at the moment we are testing. At most at the moment it's high enough. So I will show you, and I will not capture it step by step. Instead, if you are interested in step by step video, you should watch my Toyota Echo or Toyota Corolla video, which I did on the idle air control or the throttle body. So here is what we are going to do this car. So here is as you can see, uh, we are going to start this car. While we are starting, as you can see the RPMs RPM are high enough. It is something 1500 RPM at the moment it is showing. And I am not stepping on gas as you can see. So still the RPM are high. What I am doing with this car is I am loading it with a gear. I am pressing on the brake pedal and same time I am putting it in some gear say in reverse so see RPM become down this is what is the problem with this car that if it is loaded so the RPM are coming in proper range but if they are not if the car is not loaded the RPM are high enough again I am putting it in the park so let us see so while parked Again the RPM came to the very high range which is something 1400 RPM at the moment. So this is the problem with this car. We are going to troubleshoot it and let us see. So switch off. Here in this car you can see the throttle body is located over here. This is normally the fault of the throttle body. So we are going to make service on the throttle body. I am just going to show you. I am not uh, capturing each and every step to remove this throttle body from the engine. Instead I am just showing you how to do it. First we have to remove this plug. Here is the plug. And this third plug which is for the uh, throttle plate. The throttle plate motor actually. So these are. And then later on we will remove this uh, air intake pipe. It is also important because it is coming in the way. And then later on. These are a few screws which I am, which is, I can see they are located over here. So the access will be easy then because at the moment the pipe is coming in the way. So then we will, while we will remove this wiring and this pipe, so the access will be easy. So this is what is our procedure for removal of this. If you want to see the whole procedure, you can watch my other video which is on Toyota Corolla or Toyota Eco. Some, sometimes I upload it already. Uh, there I s explained each and every step. Here I am not explaining actually. So this is the one of the car for one of our very noble friend, uh, Mr. Yub. He is coming on camera. So uh, we are going to repair it. Hopefully I will show the uh, throttle, throttle body repair later on while I will remove it from the car. Here is the intake air pipe you can see. This I removed from. And another pipe which I removed from is here. This is from here actually. And this was easy enough not a difficult part to remove and here is the throttle body as you can see so for the removal you need a few tools the ratchet this 10 millimeter socket and the extender so by that way i just removed uh, these uh, three bolts you can see long bolts one is here second one is over here and the third one is of course here this one so these uh, four bolts just i'm putting them on a secure place uh, later on just this uh, throttle body you can see just it is wiggling and why it is wiggling is because of these two pipes so somebody commented me how to remove these two pipes the coolant pipes these are the two coolant pipe actually uh, so the removal is easy it's not very difficult you have to grab your pliers and just hold the clip to, uh, to both ends and wiggle it to the some underneath position so that you will be able to remove this pipe from this location this metal this plastic pipe rubber pipe hose you can be able you will be able to remove it from this metal pipe and here also the same way you have to do for the second pipe so just I'm doing one hand it's a little bit difficult one hand actually but if you are doing two with two hands it's very easy and then later on I have to wiggle these pipes 
like this and make your work with two hands and remove it just pull it down uh, push it down or pull it down it will come off same the same way the other pipe and then this throttle body will come in your hand and here is the throttle body you can see I'm just I have to show you this is the gunk and uh, dirt inside this throttle body throttle plate is not cleaned so that's why this car was not idling properly uh, I'm going to maybe I will shoot the cleaning procedure for this one here is the throttle body as you can see in my hand this is off the car now here is the gunk and dirt you can see just like this as it is on my finger now and here on the top also here also you can see and there is another thing which I'm going to show you is the gap as you can see this is the gap which is of course controlled by computer like this this plate is controlled by computer and uh, this is what we are going to clean and from the top also as you can see this is dirty and here are the coolant lines these also and another thing we will remove this cover position the camera we will remove this cover also inside we will see the gears they also we will clean and lubricate uh, I'm doubting that the lubrication will be broken inside so this is what we are going to do for this purpose we will use an old uh, toothbrush of course I will not reuse it uh, lol and uh, some solvent like petrol you can use um, for the purpose of cleaning and this is what I'm going to do it and later on what I will do is I will have to use a 20 millimeter uh, T20 uh, wrench. This is a Torx to open these screws. You can see these are uh, T20 Torx. Already I lose them after cleaning. As you can see, this much gunk was there. Some was inside the plate and some was outside. So all I removed from not all, but plate is almost clear as you can see now before it was dirty at the moment it is way clear as compared to before so this was what was the cleaning procedure for the throttle plate and later on what I'm, I did is as you can see this is one uh, part and here is the cover for this gearing system for the gearing system as you can see I just relubricated this these gears to make the uh, motion of the gears very precise and without any trouble as now you can see they are free to move and here is the motor of course this part you can see this motor is rotating actually these gears is a gear train and here is the timing for this one you can see these gears are aligned and these are small timing marks for these two gears and this is what there is some sort of spring also inside which is bringing the plate to a little bit open position so this was what was the gear terrain and here is another part which is known as uh, this is another cover actually you can see here is the terminal connection uh, connector and here is here are two terminals you can see they are uh, fixed over there on the motor in these two terminals for the motor they will be over here and these are the female and they are male and here is one potentiometer which is for the uh, throttle plate position the position is from here it is taking the position of the throttle plate from here so this is what is the, the, our TPS sensor the throttle position sensor and uh, this is also gunked and um, that was there so I cleaned it thoroughly with solvent and now is the time to fix these things back together and here is the position actually you can see a little bit far away from the center because this is also a centered so here I'm just going to put it on as this is fixed snug you can see and here are the screws just fix them back same way as I removed them from I will tighten them later on just I'm showing you how the things will go to go back 
all together as they were so here is the cover for the gear train just i'm putting it on and here is the seal you can see the rubber seal and this should be there this is sealing actually the gear system from the dirt outside the outside dirt and dust it's protecting so here are also of course the screws which are four in number so i'm just going to put them on to make it snug for the purpose you must have to have the actual uh, tool which is torx torx t20 uh, don't try it with the ordinary screwdrivers or knife as I sh have been shown in one video before for the uh, blender so don't try that because that was a blender and this is not the blender this is the car part which is throttle body and it's what this is uh, very very much expensive as you know if this part will go bad or screws will go bad so you can come in very difficult situation this is what is i'm just showing you the training procedure which is a very basic thing for all but what it i'm doing is i'm uh, tightening them in crisscross or a little bit star pattern so that i will not crack the plastic body which is this cover of course there will be some specific torque also for this one but i don't have uh, that small wrench torque wrench to do the work so what i'm doing is i'm just doing it by hand by understanding how much i have to go i will not crack the thing and i will not keep it loose instead i will do it up to some extent that it will be snug and tight and the dirt should not go in and the part should not come apart this is what is the principle to do it if i will break it i will be in very much big trouble that's what i am avoiding somewhere like this and later on i will do for the other part also which is the terminal box and the potentiometer cover of course three screws are there if you need to watch the video for the cleaning which i just skipped in this video that procedure is there for one of my other video or more of my other videos which is for the throttle body for the toyota corolla or toyota eco i did it and i just filmed i filmed it and it was a very successful video most of the people watched it they tried the procedure and successfully they did it they have been done and they did it with a great success uh, so you can watch that video and take some guideline for the cleaning there i just show each and every step for the cleaning here i just skipped that part because for the sake of repetition i was avoiding the repetition so now this is what is our throttle body just one thing is required the remaining that will go somewhere over here it was it was like this this was just a cover for the cable In the cable it was holding over here so just stuck and later on i will tighten it with the socket with the help of socket and just i checked uh, these lines also they are open for the coolant they are just it is providing heat over here in this area it's actually preheating the air which is going in to the engine this is just a preheating system and nothing else so these lines are open and they are passing the coolant i just checked it i will install this part now on the car and we'll see the result so here is what after the sh after shot I'm go just going to show you everything I fixed in you can see the wiring the harness the air intake pipe everything had been fixed and now we are going to start this car to test it for the functionality so here is what I am starting as you can see the rpm went high and came down they are coming down to some value which is 
of course 600 to 700 rpm as you can see so now I'm going to put it in the gear here you can see I'm just putting it in some reverse or D or whatsoever gear look at the rpm change so now in reverse you can see and there is no substantial change again put again put in gear in D it's the same as before I mean the same as it's in good state so this was what was our repair on this car now I'm going to show you on the engine bay the running condition so here is the running you can see the engine is smooth there is no vibration no hesitation nothing I can found so everything is good enough the throttle body is now good it's in infected and the sound which you can listen is from here these are the devices which are for the e-web system as you can see the web system is sounding it's talking or it's noising you can see just I removed the plug and there is no noise these are uh, normally going bad and even I tried many many devices on cars but they are going very very much they are ugly they are always going bad and they are making noise the clicking noise but it's okay it's accepted it's, it's acceptable to the owner even now it's not so sometimes it's doing sometimes it's not doing so it's okay this is common for Chevy common for uh, Kia and Hyundai or whatsoever brand where they are so thank you for watching keep on watching stay tuned subscribe and like if you uh, got help from this video please subscribe it and uh, share it with your friends